The privilege of nonviolence. Blessed are those who work for peace, because they will be called daughters and sons of God. Matthew 5 9. Many of us who are part of the world's peace movement often thump our chest about how nonviolent we are and how proud we are to be. We constantly enter into intellectual debates about the importance of nonviolence, and we proudly consider how to change violent social and cultural dynamics. I'm not saying this is wrong. The problem is when our egos and self-admiration lead us to analyze territories in conflict and see communities that are immersed in contexts of violence as people who are not creative and they don't really understand nonviolence the way we understand it. We have used the privilege we have of being able to decide how to respond to violence to judge those who do not have the same possibility. And by possibility, I mean the privilege of choosing to be nonviolent. Now I want you to imagine the following situation. Imagine that you have a house that you call your home. It is your home because you have dedicated your time, your energy, and your life to making that place a safe space for you and your family. This space is not just walls. It is not just a place. It means so much to you that you could lose your life if something were to happen to it. One day, a man arrives at your home accompanied by the police with an eviction order. That stranger assures you that he is the true owner of that property and this is the only argument he has to make his claim. You must leave, taking only what your and your family's hands can carry. There's no time. For this stranger, your house is only land. It is only property. For you, that land is your life. That house is your everything. So tell me, what would you do facing this difficult situation? The point of this reflection is that the privilege of nonviolence does not lie in being nonviolent, but in our capacity and in the circumstances under which we decide not to be violent. Now I'd like to know how you responded. And what would you do in this situation? The farming communities of the Middle Magdalena have two options that actually lead to the same end. They have to decide between staying and defending that which is more than a home to them and risk losing their lives in the process. Or leave without having a place to go, leaving all their life and dignity behind, condemned to wander without identity and risk losing their lives in the process. The small Colombian farming communities we work with have refused to move and have had to decide how they want to defend what means more to them than simple property. What for them is as important as their own lives. These communities live and resist murderous policies that promote the displacement and dispossession of the most vulnerable so that the rich become even richer at the cost of the lives of the impoverished. They face not only violence from the state and armed actors, but also the moral and ethical judgment of pacifists who from their desks send moral judgments about what communities should or should not do to defend their territories. They have decided to be nonviolent, not out of privilege, but by choice. Each of us must choose our own path, but we must understand that nonviolence, as well as all human interactions, is in itself a matter of privilege, which has ceased to be a vocation over time to become a profession. Our invitation to you is to understand the pain of those who decide to act before judging their actions, because goodness and faith are the greatest examples of this vocation that we know as nonviolence. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter as at ACAPCOL and on YouTube as Columbia Team. Remember that if you like this video, I invite you to give it a thumbs up and share it on your social media. My name is John Henry Camargo from Christian Peacemaker Teams and our work is possible thanks to your donations. And this was Teaching in Action.